Hey, what's up? This is Amalfi Coast here. It feels like with sneaker releases these days, the hype seems to be centralizing a bit, i.e. if it's not one of those top releases of the year, things like the Element React 87s, the Akron Impresto's, which as I'm filming this drop today, and some other stuff like the off-white releases as well. If it's not one of those things, often releases will fall by the wayside a little bit. And while that might be bad in some ways in that it ends up with everyone wearing very similar things, it means that there are lots of other releases throughout the year which go under the radar and people don't really pay quite as much attention to. So if you're like me and taking L's is your full-time job, then you're probably looking for something which is new, cool, an interesting release in some way. Maybe something which is quite similar to those big AAA hyped releases, but more affordable and more attainable as well. The first thing I want to look at in terms of potential alternatives is the Nike Element React 87. Now, when the first pictures of these came out, I really liked them, and by the time they dropped, it turns out so did everyone else. So these ended up being anything but underhyped or underrated. But while those and the first round of Undercover collabs sold out immediately, there are some alternatives here. The most obvious one being the Nike Element React 55. Now these were very obviously created as a response to the success of the 87. However, the translucent upper, which made these look very unique, very sleek as well, has been replaced with mesh instead, which gives the shoe overall a bit of a bulkier look. However, the overall silhouette and the cool shapes on the midsole and outsole, which were another big part of the unique appeal of the 87, still remain. So I think aesthetically, these have a lot in common. And if you like the 87s, you may well like these as well. There are some pretty decent colorways of the 55 as well, which make this all round a pretty wearable shoe. For a mid-price trainer, I think this is actually a surprisingly nice silhouette. Although for some people these are going to have that image of I couldn't get the 87 so I'm picking these up instead, they're a bit of an 87 light. Um, depending on what elements of the Element React 87 you like, then these could be a pretty viable alternative, particularly as it seems like a lot of people don't know these exist at all. Something else that I wanted to mention as an 87 alternative is the EXP X14 and X24. Again, these seem to go under people's radars. I think they released at a very similar time to the Reacts, so people's attention was very much in that direction. These use a similar translucent upper to the 87, so if that translucency was something that you particularly liked, and that overall sleekness that the material creates, then have a look at these as an alternative. The silhouette is a bit more race ready, shall we say, than the very lifestyle focused 87. I'd say that these look overall a bit more similar to a zoom fly. These come in a bunch of really solid colorways, so there's quite a few potential options depending on what your wardrobe looks like or just what color combination you're feeling the most. And the X24, that's the just do it pack version. So I think the silhouette is identical, it's just a case of some slightly different branding. And in my opinion, this was one of the better, if not the best release under that just do it brand pack. They're a bit more eye-catching than the X14s, and I think the colorways are pretty solid as well using that white and orange combo, but they're not quite as silly with the Just Do It branding as they are in some of the other models from this pack. The other shoe that I mentioned earlier, or shoe collection rather, is Nike's collab with Off-White. These first came out with the 10 pack back in 2017, and now here we are, and there's still new models releasing, and people are still going mad for them, so the hype is still clearly there, and that deconstructed style which Off-White put out with Nike is still something that's very strong and it's an aesthetic that other shoes and other manufacturers are starting to work into their footwear and collabs. And there are some things here which are quite interesting which might have gone under your radar. The first is Vans, surprisingly, with their cut and sew pack. For a company which traditionally sticks so closely to their silhouette, it was unusual to see them breaking away from that for this pack and to see them, in my opinion, doing a fairly good job of it. In general, these new models look pretty solid. I think they do a good job of bringing that deconstructed look to Vans without going too silly or too over the top, and I feel like they've done it in a slightly different style to how Off-White approaches the Nikes. 
So these hit a nice balance, I think, between being very tried and true silhouettes that you've seen a hundred times before, but then using that very 2018 trend to bring something slightly new to the table. As I'm filming this, these seem to be coming in and out of stock on various places, so if I can find somewhere where they're available, I'll stick a link in the description for sure. But if not, I can't imagine that resell on these is going to be too crazy, because as I say, the hype just didn't really seem to be there, overshadowed again perhaps by some of the other bigger releases that are out at the moment. On a similar note is the Puma Han Kjobenhaven collection. This is I think the second collection with these guys that Puma have brought out so of course you can get some kind of idea of how they're going to approach these sneakers. Again this takes established Puma silhouettes and updates them with an unfinished or a raw or an inside out look. Of the deconstructed sneakers this is probably the cleanest and most minimal take on it that I've seen. Especially especially the Trail Fox disc, I think that's my favourite of this collection. They to me have the most high fashion-esque look to them. I could definitely see these being worn with some nice avant-garde, very androgynous fits, nice wide cropped pants. In a similar way to how you might wear Balenciaga Triple S's or some of the chunkier off-white collabs, but also I think you could smarten these up quite nicely and dress them in that very typical minimalist Scandinavian style. But the leather panels, the inside out tongue, the cool little lacing system with that disc there, all of these things are quite interesting to me. On a similar note, aesthetically in terms of that mix between deconstructed and quite clean, quite minimal, is the Nike and PSNY Public School New York Air Force One. I'm not 100% on what the availability of these will be like by the time this video goes live, but if they're not in stock, hopefully the resale on them won't be too outrageous. This is another one that probably suffered from being crowded out by more hyped releases, because on paper it feels like there's a lot of stuff that PSNY and Nike have got right here. You've got that very classic shape in the form of the Air Force One, you're keeping it very clean with the colorway and very wearable, but making some significant updates to that silhouette to give this an interesting, unique twist. Those unfinished leather tabs and Nike swoosh really nail that deconstructed look in a very similar way to both the Off-White Air Force Ones and the A Cold Wall Air Force Ones that came out last year. Both of those are currently going for pretty big money. Maybe this release is too similar to both of those, maybe people are just fatigued with seeing deconstructed Air Force Ones, but I don't think there's anything wrong with working within a trend like that, and it gives people another potential option if they want to get this style, but not quite pay cold wall prices. I genuinely feel though that if these had more marketing, more media coverage, and they were released at a time where it's a bit of a drought for hyped stuff, then these could have done really well and been really popular. I also want to talk about a couple of sneakers which could fit nicely into that tech wear style. Firstly is the Nike Bowfin. I only came across these a couple of days ago, but it seems like these could be quite a strong contender. I feel like these could work quite nicely with tech wear in a similar fashion to the Vape Max Utility. In some ways, these are like the utility version of the Air Max 270. Right now, the colorways range from a bit weird to pretty awful, but there is going to be an all black version dropping a little bit later this year, so that's going to be one to look out for because like the Vapormax Utility, it's going to be super wearable, it's got a bit of that sneaker boot kind of styling to it as well, and it's just going to fulfill all your tech wear, all weather sneaker needs. Although it's not quite as futuristic as the Vapormax because it doesn't have the same sole, hopefully that'll mean that it comes in at a slightly lower price, and it'll make it a bit more wearable as well. I've talked about Nike quite a lot in this video, but it's important not to forget about Adidas as well. Recently they released the NMD T. TS1 Gore-Tex Prime Knit. They've already played around with Gore-Tex Prime Knit sneakers with the CS1s that came out last year that I did do a review on, and those definitely had some strengths to them, although one of the things that I criticised was using a black upper and then white boost on what is supposed to be an all-weather sneaker that you can get wet. As soon as that boost starts getting dirty, it's just going to look awful. So they've come in with an all-black version, so black upper, black boost as well. That makes them way more appropriate for wearing in winter weather, so potentially these could be quite a strong option. I also think because they've mixed up that silhouette a little bit, they've got this cool kind of stacked thing with the toggleable laces that you can cinch in a little bit, you've got a bit more of fit flexibility too, and a generally more technical look. Now these 
these are still NMD, so they come with those obligatory plugs on the side and there's that taped branding, which you may or may not be a fan of. Certainly the big NMD wave is very much over now that we're at the end of 2018. And personally, I'm not that big on NMDs, but I am willing to overlook that for this release. Retail is kind of expensive. These are coming in at 180 pounds, but these are a good option if you do want to look more towards that streetwear techwear hybrid and just picking up those shoes that are going to give you some performance but still look like a more casual streetwear sneaker at the same time. So hopefully you can come away now with some more ideas for sneakers to pick up this year. All of the options are unique and while they're not as hyped they still have the potential to turn heads because they've all got some cool design elements to them and in general they're all twists on something that's a bit more conventional. If I had to choose any of these, I think the Nike X24s look really cool and they're probably one of the more eye-catching sneakers of this list. And the Adidas TS1s, I'm sure I would find very, very easy to work into my current wardrobe. But let me know guys what you feel like your favorites are in this list. And if you've got anything else, any cool releases out there that you've seen recently, that you think should be on people's radars, then definitely stick them down there in the comments. If you enjoyed this video though, please do give it a like and thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in next week's video. Shout out to Jarrell, I know, I know. Keep a look out next week though, there's some budget stuff incoming. And shout out to Finn, I'd really like to do more Cavent stuff as well, so I'll probably pick some up this season at some point. I've got a couple of jumpers already. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff from them and I think it's a cool brand. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you want to catch some more, there'll be links going up at the top there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then definitely consider doing so because I've got loads more cool videos on the way. So hit the little circle -y bubble thing on one of those two sides and be subscribed forever.